So, all right, here we go. So why branding? Okay, let's jump into branding. Building your brand matters. And here's a little bit of research around it. 81% of consumers across the globe said they need to be able to trust that the brand that they buy from. Okay, so even today in bigger corporations, they want to know that there is a personality to the brand, there's a connectedness, and there's a corporate social responsibility, right? So whoever they're buying from, they want to trust, trust, like, and know that there's a conscious behind that brand. And of course, when you're a personal brand, okay, it's much easier to do that and get that across other than a larger company, right? It typically takes five to seven brand interactions before a consumer even remembers the brand, okay? So that's why we wanna make sure that your personal brand is very, very clear. Again, it doesn't matter whether you're a coach, whether you have a small business, the personal brand has to be clear. We're gonna dive into that a little bit more. And then it takes less than half a second for someone to form an opinion about you and your brand or whether or not they wanna work with you. That's colors, that's logos, that's energy. Okay, who you are as an individual, how you show up, and that's what we're going to dive into. Who's the brand? Well, my friends, you are the, the brand. People buy from people they like and trust, okay? And they people want to avoid advertising. They want to avoid all of the social media glam and glitz and the ads and all the pinging and the bots and stuff that we're seeing today. And they want to buy from people, again, that they're connected to that they trust to give their money to, okay? Unless you have a product like this lipstick here, which to tell you the truth, I'm not, I don't care about a personal brand behind this lipstick. Unless you have something like this, right? And most of you here don't, right? Your leadership coaches, like you are the service that you need to be at the front of your brand, okay? So again, you are the brand. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is how do you build that personal brand how far do you go? Are there any boundaries? Are there things you should and should not do? Okay, and we'll continue to engage. So just in the chat, we have a handful of participants. Tell me in the chat, all I wanna know is what you do. Are you a leadership coach, which I saw for some of you? Um, do you run you know, a printing service, a printing business? I have a beauty store in business. Thank you, Carla, wonderful. What else do we have here? So Carla, you're a woman-owned business right? You, we run a beauty store, which is very important for personal brand. I see digital marketing and social media specialists. Absolutely. So that's a huge personal brand. What else do we have? Coach and consultant. Yes, John, I remember you mentioning that in regards to leader, leadership. Fabulous. What else do we have? More coach and consultant. Okay. So keep putting it in the chat. I'm going to keep going. So what's the purpose? So this is, so now here's where I want you to start writing things down. In order for you to establish your personal brand, you need to understand what is the point of the brand, okay? So some of us have a brand because we're running a business and we want to promote, we want to gain more clients, we want to gain more lead generation, right? We want to generate more leads to nurture and to foster to then gain more clientele, more profit, et cetera. Some of us have a personal brand because maybe we don't have our own business. Maybe we're in the corporate space, but we want to start public speaking, Okay, or you want to establish yourself as a thought leader. Some of us want to build a personal brand because, again, we want to be known as credible and noticeable in our specific industry. So I work with a lot of executives today that they don't run their own company. They have no desire to, but they do want to be established as a thought leader in their industry, whether it's technology, whether it's fitness. And so they want to build a strong personal brand so that they are seen as that credible expert so that they can continue to rise in the industry so that they can be asked to be on, you know, keynotes and speaking in the industry so that they can build a certain persona. And then some of us want to build a personal brand for advocacy for a cause, right? So maybe there's a cause that you believe in or a nonprofit or something of corporate social responsibility that you want to advocate for. I'm going to assume that most of you here want to build your personal brand because you want to gain more clients. You want more business exposure, right? You want to gain credibility as the expert, as the business owner. So that's why your personal brand is going to be important. And I can tell you right now, I coach with a lot of coaches and consultants and business owners, and I help them build their business. And this is the most pivotal step, okay? So as I mentioned, I took my company from $100 
to making six figures in 30 days without spending $1 on ads, no Facebook, no Google, no nothing, strictly by building a personal brand that got noticed, it got credibility, and it got exposure. And from there, you get more referrals, and then the pipeline just keeps coming, okay? And it all came down to my personal brand. Both TED Talks, the book that I wrote, I all did on my own, okay? So all of these things can be done, but you really have to establish that brand. So first thing is first, what are your brand values? So uh, what I want you to do is I just want you to write this out. What do you stand for? Here's a couple questions. Number one, what's your mission? If I were to ask you, I want you to tell me in 10 seconds, less than two sentences, what is your mission? What is it? Can you tell me what it is? So I see that we have a leadership coach here. I see that we have um, you know, beauty consultant, we have beauty products. What's the mission of the work that you're doing? Okay. What are the values that you stand for? Now, here's the key. The values that you stand for should also coincide with your company. That's how we build a personal brand. You're not building a company that has one set of values. And then you as a human being have a different set of values. It doesn't work that way. Okay. It needs to be intertwined and intermingled. So the values that you have for your products and for your business also should be your personal values. And then that is how we mesh the two together so that when you're on social media, when you're on LinkedIn, when you're on these platforms, then the two come together. Okay. So one really, really important brand, you know, personal value for me is integrity is leading your life with honesty and integrity, whether you're by yourself in a room or whether you have 10,000 people watching you. That's also part of the company brand. Okay, I don't hire anybody that's not on the same page when it comes to integrity, honesty, and authenticity. I wanna see people that act the same way they do by themselves as they do with 10,000 people. And I don't mean like, you know, romantically and with family and friends. I mean, their core values, their morale, their ethos have to be the same. So what values do you stand for? And are you exuding that on your online presence when you're walking in public, when you're talking? So I'll give you an example. I have one client when she came to me early and she said, one of the values that I have is I really, you know, like uplifting other people to be confident. Okay. Confidence is a huge value for me. And I looked at her and I said, well, let me ask you something. Do you think you're confident? And she said, not at all. So you see, there's no integrity in that. It's like you have a value, but yet you haven't done the work to have that confidence for yourself. So they got to go hand in hand. Okay. Then what emotions do you want to seek? Okay. When someone doesn't know you, when you walk into a room, remember that you are a walking billboard. You are an entrepreneur. You are a business owner. You're a walking billboard. When you walk into a room, you are presenting yourself, whether or not you know it. So when you walk into a room, what kind of emotion do you want to evoke? What kind of energy do you want to ev evoke, right? I can confidently say that the energy that I evoke is confidence, right? And I know that because of the work that I've done in the self-awareness and the industry that I'm in, and that is intentional. When I hop on the camera to start talking to you and teaching you and training you, I don't want lack of engagement. I don't want pass this, you know, passivity. I don't want it to be like, wah, wah. I want the energy to come in hot. I want it to be clear. I want it to be confident. And I want you to know that I'm clear on what I'm teaching and what I'm doing, right? That's one of my values is to ensure that there's a consistency and there's a stability, right? And the trust when you hear me, because when I'm clear and consistent and I'm confident, people are attracted to that and they want to learn from that, right? So what emotions do you seek to evoke when someone doesn't know you? Type that in the chat. So even if it's just a couple, whether it's you know kindness, um, integrity, confidence, what emotions do you want to have known or perceived when someone doesn't know you and your brand? Okay, type that in just the chat. Let me see what you have. How do you want the viewer to describe you? So thank you, Joanne. I see trustworthiness, compassion, kindness, competence, integrity, curiosity. Great, Jerry. Absolutely. That's all awesome. How do you want the viewer to describe you? Carla, you put self-confidence and integrity. Absolutely. And then the next question is, what specific qualities and people do you want associated with you? 
Okay, so these are all, this is all your brand and your values. What do you stand for? So one of the values for Rise Up for you is kindness. Kindness first, kindness matters. Just because we're assertive and confident doesn't mean that we're not kind. Kindness goes hand in hand with being confident, okay? So I'll give you a perfect example. We do a lot of training. We do a lot of workshops and we also do events. We do four pivotal events throughout the year, okay? We do a women's leadership conference in March. We do a business conference in June, a corporate culture conference in August. And then we do just like the individual master success conference coming up in November. Well, at one of the events, we had somebody that wanted to speak for us, okay? So she wanted to be a speaker for Rise Up For You and come on our stage and meet our audience. Again, value, kindness, kindness first, always kindness. So she didn't know that I was watching and I was like in the corner, like, you know, observing the guests and getting ready for the event and a pen broke, right? And she was at the assistant table, a pen broke and got all over her hands. And she started screaming at the team coordinator at the time and being very rude and disrespectful to the team coordinator who didn't know how to help her. She just needed to go to the bathroom and wash her hands. And there was a huge line of people. So she was not kind. Actually, she was rude. She was mean and she was disrespectful to the team member. And she didn't know that I had watched that whole scenario. And my team member almost wanted to cry. So then when she sent me an email that said she wanted to speak for me, what do you think my response was? Well, she's not in alignment with the value or the brand. I'm not going to associate myself or rise up for you if it's not in alignment. Okay. So now I want you to ask yourself, are there certain things in your life or certain people in your life that aren't in integrity with your brand and your mission and where you want to go? Okay. Very, very important. This is all what you stand for. And what do you want to be known for? Okay. We don't want to be a jack of all trades. We want to be phenomenal in one thing. Okay. We want to be phenomenal in one thing. Now that one thing can be a little bit broader. Okay. So for example, I know that my team and I are really, and I say this humbly, we are really, really good at these human skills, right, that I listed. I mean, we have a team of experts. We've been studying this. I'm a former executive. My master's is in executive leadership. I mean, this is our world. But if somebody comes to us and says, can you teach my sales team? We say, nope, not for us. We're going to pass you on to somebody else. Even though we technically could teach sales, right, I run my own business. That's not what we do. That's not our expertise. I'd rather have somebody come in that is a sales guru, an expert that can teach that. Our field is soft skills or human skills. So I see that somebody put leadership coach. Great. Stick to that leadership. Be the best leadership coach you can be. Be, be unique in your leadership and really be known for what it is that you do. Okay. So then we have our next one, our next um, our next step here is our non-negotiables. So this is really important because this is where this is where the personal brand comes in, where people ask me, well, my Facebook and my Instagram and my LinkedIn and da 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 da, should they should they be me or should they be my company? And my response is always they should be you but you need to have non-negotiables, okay? So you need to ask yourself, for example, do you tell your story in relation to your business? Some of you guys have a very amazing story. Every single person has a story about life that maybe impacted their journey to building a business or impacted their journey as to why they became a leadership coach. Is that something that you infuse as a part of your brand or do you leave it out? If so, how much of it, okay? Then you have to ask yourself, do you have a no play zone? So I want you to write down what is your no play zone? So for example, I don't talk about politics or religion, period, period, not even as a person. If I'm going to have a conversation about politics and religion, it's going to be in person and it's going to be in a safe place with people that I know, like, and trust. It's not going to be on social media. Okay. So it's not going to be at the expense of what I'm putting on social media. That's a non-negotiable for me. And it's a non-negotiable for my team as well. Okay. So you have to ask yourself on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your LinkedIn, on your Pinterest, on whatever it is, is it possible to merge the two? 
Well, my response to this is that the professional is the person and the person is the professional. So whether or not you own your own business, you're the same person and you should be able to exude the same content, the same energy that's going to support your business. So my passion for helping people and pulling out the potential and company culture and leadership, that's who I am. So if you go to my Instagram and you go to my Facebook, you're going to see that stuff because that's what I believe in. That's how I live my life. When I'm not working with Rise Up For You, I'm doing yoga so that I can balance my mind, body, spirit. I'm giving back to charity. You know what I mean? I'm spending time with my family, all these things that are connected to becoming your best. So I use that as a part of my brand. It's all connected. And what do you want, what do you not want to be associated with? So this is something that we've talked about earlier about particular brands people? What are the things that are not connected for you that you shouldn't be posting, that you shouldn't be surrounding yourself with? Okay. Now, image matters. So we need to start brainstorming a, a way to have a consistent brand. So I want you to think about your colors. Okay. And when I say colors, I don't just mean online. I mean, like when you're on camera, when you walk to a networking event, when you're connecting with people, I mean, if you haven't noticed, I'm wearing white with a gold necklace and my office in my house is yellow. What do you think my brand colors are? If you look at the, yoke, the, the logo, right? They're, they're yellow, it's gold. So you can see here that I did that very strategically, okay? So you have to think about the colors so that they can connect it with you. So top three colors used by companies include blue, red, and gray scale. Now these are by companies. So for you as an individual, you can go a different way, depending what your industry is. 90% of the time, our initial gut reaction is product is based on color alone, right? It's based on the image of what's going to evoke the emotion. And people will retain 65% of the information they learn three days after seeing it when paired with an image. So when you have an image and then you have a little bit of content, they'll retain 65% of it. That's actually pretty high in today's world. Here's my favorite one to talk about. Become a LinkedIn pro. How many of you are on LinkedIn? Can you just put in the chat? How many of you are on LinkedIn? Just, just put a little emoji or raise your hand. Let me know who's on LinkedIn. Let's see. Carla, are you on LinkedIn? Jerry, Joanne, let's see here. Jerry, yep, yep, yes, perfect, great. Okay, I expect all of you to be connecting with me on LinkedIn before we're done, <laughs> okay? So you need to be a LinkedIn pro especially those of you that are on this session that are watching, LinkedIn is your number one client. You just don't know it yet, okay? I can tell you that half of our work comes from LinkedIn because we've learned how to build a brand around it. So LinkedIn has over 756 million members. But would you believe me if I told you that that's still only a third of Facebook and Instagram? So it's actually still quite behind, okay? So here are a couple questions that I have for you that you can type in the chat that I want you to write down. Do you have 500 connections or more? If you don't get to 500 connections as fast as possible, because the thing is, is that with LinkedIn, when you initially go to the page, all it says is 500 plus. So if you have 501 or you have 10,000 connections, it doesn't matter. LinkedIn says 500 plus. So get to 500 plus as fast as you can if you haven't already. Do you have an engaging title, headshot, and banner photo, okay? When I say engaging title, it shouldn't just say leadership coach. No, it should say transforming leaders with transformational techniques, da-da-da-da-da, right? Like there should be something empowering and emotional about it. It shouldn't just say, hey, I'm a leadership coach. Thank you, Jerry. Absolutely, we'll talk later, okay? So do you have an engaging title? So for example, if you go to my LinkedIn, it doesn't say I'm the founder of Rise It For You first, right? It doesn't say I'm just a leadership coach. No, it says I help transform individuals and companies through people, social, and emotional skills. Okay, that's what it says. So do you have an engaging title? Do you have a standout headshot with your colors? And do you have a banner photo that is you in action? You in action, okay? Because remember that every time you post a photo that has you doing what your business is, you gain credibility, okay? So if you go to my LinkedIn, for example, I am in my TEDx talk 
I, I have a picture of me standing on stage doing a TED talk. That's strategic. That's because I want people to go to my LinkedIn and see like, oh, she actually does speak. They actually do do this, okay? So if you don't have a picture stage one, it doesn't matter, but get a picture, whether it's with your beauty products, in the store, with your clients, you know, in a leadership coaching training session, whatever it is, try to get a banner photo that's engaging, that shows that you're actually doing the work. Show up with video three times a week, okay? Three times a week, you should be on video on LinkedIn. It can be 60 seconds, no more, no less and then write articles, comment to others, and be engaged. I'm telling you, LinkedIn is the number one platform you need to be on. Okay, let's keep going. How can I add value? So now number eight is adding value. So what are you great at? That's the first thing, okay? And then that's how you need to decide how you're going to add value. If you're phenomenal on camera, my first career was as a performer. I used to do musical theater. I don't even think twice about camera. You put me on stage in front of 10,000 people. You give me a microphone. You put me on Zoom. I'm going to deliver because I'm comfortable in that environment because that's what I learned. That's the first career I had. Not everybody is like that. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm not a great writer. Okay. So I have a copywriter. Okay. But I do a lot of video because I know I'm, I'm good at it and I could add value on video. You might be the opposite. You might say, I'm a phenomenal writer. And I can write an amazing article on leadership. I can write an amazing article on building your brand. I can write an amazing article on cosmetic do's and don'ts and how to put on your makeup, right? And how to put your best foot forward with the products that we have. So you need to decide what way is the best for you to add value. If you give a presentation, what can you talk about? Okay, so again, adding that value. So you're a leadership coach. You run a cosmetic company, right? you're in, you know, marketing and social media. Can you do a presentation on your expertise and deliver to generate more clients and build your brand? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down and just make a note. If you can't think of it now, that's okay. I want you to think of three to five topics that you can add value on as the business owner that you are that can then generate clients for your actual business. So if you're a leadership coach, three to five presentations that you can do that can land people into your leadership coaching business. If you run a cosmetic company, three to five presentations that you can do or topics that you can talk about that can get people to buy the product from you, okay? So that whether that means like how to mix and match your products, how to do your eyes a certain color, whatever it is, how to put your best foot forward with makeup in a job interview that people could then buy products from you and become a client. Number nine, this is my favorite. Be seen, be heard, be relevant. I always say this. Be seen, be heard, be relevant. Show up on video, okay? So now take your value add topics and film them and push them out on LinkedIn. Like I was saying, batch your videos. Batching your videos means that like I might take one day, I'll put my makeup on, I'll have like four to five like dresses and shirts sitting next to me in the office. And then I will just do like five to six videos. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. Most of my videos are no, no more than two minutes. There's 60 seconds to two minutes. I add value. I show that I know what I'm talking about and that's it. And then I put it on social media. I don't sit and do, you know, five, 10 minute videos because people don't watch them. Okay. So think of a day, maybe it's one day a month, okay, or bi-weekly that you record five videos that are one to two minutes that are you adding value in your industry that now you can start batching and posting to show that you are the expert to build your brand, have different outfits picked out, and then schedule when you're going to post your videos. So maybe you say, I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm going to post it. So maybe you need to do six videos every two weeks at less than two minutes. That's not a lot for folks. And all of you guys are experts at what you do and you're credible at what you do. That's why you're here and you can make that happen. And then get involved in the community, something outside of your business, okay? So go sit on a board, become a part of a committee, add value to another organization or a nonprofit so that again, you are establishing yourself as an expert outside of your company. And lastly, the last step to building your brand and getting more visibility is make a list of potential power partners that you can connect with. 
For example, we have a leadership co-chair. Are you connected with SCORE? Are you connected with local chambers? Are you connected with various organizations and solving where you can help support some of the work that they're doing? Collaborate with video, podcasting and articles. Reach out to people that are on podcasts. Ask if you can share your content and your knowledge. Find people who have a similar audience, yet don't do what you do, okay? So find people who have a similar audience, but don't do the content or the curriculum that you do. So I'll give you an example. We have a power partner called the Female Lead. They have over 5 million people in their community. They're in the UK, they're from around the world. They have hundreds of countries that are in this community. And they talk about women in the workplace and diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? Both things that we talk about, but they only do it through motivation. So they only do it through like quotes, um, little videos that they put on of celebrities on social media. They don't have any coaching. They don't have any training. They don't have any curriculum. Guess where we came in? So we came in, we created a partnership, and now we do all the content, the leadership coaching, the women in the workplace training and coaching. And we have now built this amazing partnership where we're impacting hundreds of women from around the world in leadership when it comes to women in the workplace. And then if you don't ask, you'll never know, right? So always, always make the ask with the partner or the brand, okay? So a couple golden nuggets. You are your brand. The person is the professional. The professional is the person. They're always connected. Lead with your values, spark connection and relatability, and just get started. If I were to give you one step now, it's go to your LinkedIn and start tackling LinkedIn and put all of your energy in LinkedIn with video and with engagement, because that's where it's going to count, okay? So again, my name is Neva, and you know today I talked about 10 personal branding tips. I always do a freebie. So if you want to do a free coaching session with myself and my team, it's completely free. It's 15 minutes. You can talk about leadership, career growth and business, or confidence. These are the three things that we are experts at. Of course, personal branding is a part of that career factor. Then you can go to that link, canonly.com, rise it for you. Or you can simply take your phone and open it up just like we do at the restaurants today for COVID. And you can scan the code and it'll take you straight to the link and you can get signed up. It's completely free. All we do is add value. Okay. So you're going to bring your challenge. You're going to tell us what it is that you need some support on. And then we're going to provide some strategy that can help you. Okay. So again, my name is Netta. It's been an honor to be here. Um, of course, you know that this is from Santa Barbara Score. Thank you, Santa Barbara, for having us. My team is going to be doing these trainings throughout the next couple months. So look for the Rise Up For You brand in collaboration with Santa Barbara, because we will be here to support you. Does anybody have any questions? Now is the opportunity that I can do some coaching with you and that I can answer any questions that can help suit you in particular and customize for you. So I'll just wait a few minutes here to see if you have any questions at all. But I'm telling you, first things first is that we gotta make sure that our LinkedIn is strong to build your personal brand. And you need to establish what it is that you wanna get out there. Very, thank you, absolutely. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Jerry. Great messages that I'm seeing so far. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear from you. And again, we'll be back. We'll do some trainings on confidence and imposter syndrome, a big one. We'll do a training a little bit later on emotional intelligence. I know some of you here, I'm sure, I'm sure Joanne, you're a big fan of emotional intelligence. So it's been an honor to be here. If you don't have any questions, I'm going to let you go. If you do, please um, send an email. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can send a message. You can sign up for the free coaching session and we'll be sure to support you in any way that we have. Uh, Tarlisha, okay. Do you have any tips for LinkedIn? I've used LinkedIn in the past, but haven't received successful results. Okay, so um, let me ask you this. And uh, Tarlisha, if you can, um, Tarlisha, if you can tell me in the chat if you feel comfortable with this, I would like to actually share my screen and go to your page. Are you okay with that? Type it in the chat if you're okay with that, Tarlisha. I'm gonna to go to your LinkedIn page and I'm gonna give you some specific feedback and we can do just a little bit of work here, okay? So um, Tarlisha, if you're not comfortable with that, tell me now as I'm, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tarlisha. Okay, let's, 
Let's go to, okay, so here's my LinkedIn page, right? Let's go to Tarlisha. I just cut and pasted your name. So let me see if I could find you. Um, is your, are you under a different name, Tarlisha? Tarlisha Johnson, maybe is it just Johnson? Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Tarlisha, let me know if you're under another name because we don't, I can't, it doesn't look like you're coming up. Tarlisha. Nope. Yeah, it doesn't look like I, so I'll wait for you to type your name and your LinkedIn username in the chat, and then I can help support you. In the meantime, I'll show you my LinkedIn page so that you can see, you know, what we're looking at, right? So standout background, if you can see, I even have a video on my profile picture. Then I have a standout header, right? And then I have like leadership coach, but that's towards the end. Okay. Then you can see here that I have a strong, like strong activity that happens. Okay. So I'm constantly posting. I have a strong about section. So maybe TJ Lee, let's try TJ Lee. Let's see what happens. Um, is that you? TJ Lee um, at Rebel CEO at Rebel Stitch. Let me know if that's you. And if it is, then we will, nope, nope. Okay, great. That's okay. So connect with me a little bit more, Tarlisha, sign up for that free coaching call, and then we can go through it. But I would say, honestly, best example is that you need to be engaged and you need to be doing video, 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 video. So if you go to my LinkedIn, you'll see, if you go to my posts, you'll see that I am constantly posting videos. Okay. So like I have some quotes here. I have like, I'm doing a keynote in Wisconsin. I have a couple more quotes and then I have videos. I have another video. Then I have like something about my book. I have another video. So then we did a conference. Then we did pick see I'm showing that like we're on site training. Okay. So all of these things, here's another keynote. All of these things are going to add to your personal brand. Okay. So yep. Awesome. All right. Very good. So thank you guys so much for joining. It's been an honor to be here. I look forward to connecting with you and please let me know if you have any questions and thank you score Santa Barbara for having us.